Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. Today I'm going to show you how to play the port of Undertale on RG351 devices. Now this will work on the RG351P and the RG351M through an app called Amber Ports. And Amber Ports works primarily on ArcOS, but I'm happy to say that it now works on 351 Elec as well. And there are a ton of different other ports that you can play on this device, but I really wanted to focus on this one because it's kind of complicated to install. And secondly, this is one of my oldest son's favorite games. And when he first heard that I was working on getting this put on RG351 devices, it was the first time that I kind of saw him excited about this stuff. And the game plays wonderfully, it has perfect sound, everything plays really well. Some of the text is a little bit hard to read, but other than that I have no complaints. One of the challenges in running this port is that it's made to run the Raspberry Pi or Linux version of this game. And even after you buy the game, it's kind of hard to get those game assets, so I'm going to walk you through how to do that without having to use a Linux computer. So this tutorial will be just for Windows computers. Alright, without any further delay, let's jump into it. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to go to GOG.com where you're going to buy the game. And right now it's for sale for $10, but you know, there are sales that happen every once in a while. So maybe you already own it, whatever it happens to be, just make sure you buy it from GOG.com. And the reason why you want to get it from GOG.com is because once you buy it once, you have the ability to download it both in Windows, Mac, or Linux versions. So once you've made your purchase, it's going to show up as being in your library. And all you have to do is just go over to your GOG.com profile up here on the top and then select games. And then just find it in your collection and then go to this little arrow here and do view downloads. In here, you want to set the system to Linux and then just download the game installer. And this is going to be a big SH file. And I would recommend just make a folder somewhere and just put it there. And it's about 128 megs altogether. Next, we're going to install Amber Ports on your device in case you don't have it already. And there's a written guide down below in the link description. Just follow this. It'll walk you through all these steps as you're going through it in the video. So just download the zip file from Amber Ports. And again, you can save it wherever you want. I'm going to save it in the same folder. And then go ahead and open it up. And you'll see there's just an SH file and then there's a folder. And you need to put these onto your SD card of your device. So here's the games partition of my SD card for one of my 351 devices. And I'm going to go into the ports folder. And then I'm just going to move this folder and this SH file over into here. And it's as simple as that. Okay, so go ahead and eject your SD card and put it back into your device and turn it on. So here I am in Arc OS. I'm going into my ports folder. And there you can see there's Amber ports. So you just click on that. Now typically the first thing you want to do anytime you open up this app is to update it because there's updates that happen almost daily with this thing. Okay, and so once it's done, it'll close it out and say go ahead and start it again. So let's go back into ports, go back into Amber ports. Now inside here we're going to go into the games folder and you're going to want to scroll all the way down to find Undertale. And there's a bunch of other games here, and there's all sorts of instructions if you go back to the Amber Ports wiki page on what files are needed in order to run these. Some of these, like AM2R and Spelunky, don't require anything. Those are freeware games, so you can just install those right then and there. But we're going to do Undertale. So just go ahead and hit A, and it's going to download the assets you need and put them in the correct folder for you. And it's super fast. At this point, you can just go ahead and exit out of Amber Ports and then turn off your machine. You can also go ahead and put your SD card back into your computer. But first, we're going to extract the assets from the Undertale game file that we just recently purchased. So in order to do this, we're actually going to run a Debian or a Linux machine on our Windows device. So the first thing you want to do is go into the Microsoft Store and then search for the word Debian, D-E-B-I-A-N. And this is a free app here, and it just basically runs a Linux distribution within Windows. And I've already purchased it, but right here it would say install. I'm just going to hit launch here. Now, when you first launch it, it's going to say it's not able to install yet because it needs one other thing. And that's called a Windows subsystem for Linux, or WSL. So we're going to install that WSL. It's very simple. If you see in the error code, it actually gives you a website to go to. So we're going to type in that website code and go to this Microsoft page here. And this walks you through how to actually install this WSL. What we're going to do is the manual install option. And here you can see it's just a single PowerShell command in order to install it. So let's copy that PowerShell command, and then we're going to execute this in Windows PowerShell. So type in PowerShell, and then right-click on the app and do Run as Administrator. Then confirm that you're going to be an administrator, 
And then all you do when it opens up is just paste that code in. And it'll take a minute to run through everything, but this is the last step you have to do in order to get Linux running on your Windows PC. Okay, so let's boot up Debian again and make sure it works. You can see here it's saying installing. After a minute, it's going to ask you to enter a username and a password. You could come up with anything. You could write bananas and potatoes. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to use the username of user and then a password of my choosing. And then retype your password and everything's good to go. Okay, so let's go back to the folder where we had that game install file that we got from GOG.com. Once you have that open, go ahead and open up Debian again. And this is where we're going to get deep into the matrix. You ready for this? We're going to type in slash MNT, which is mount, another slash, and then a lowercase c, yet another slash, and then we're going to move that file over into Debian. Now there's a couple other tricks we have to do. For example, we have to take all these backslashes and make them forward slashes. And then you want to remove the big C and the colon from the code itself. This is what the code will look like. So mount C and then all of the file path for where that sh file is. And this is basically saying, hey, let's run that sh file. You'll be greeted by this screen here, which says welcome to the installer. And then it's going to walk you through the user license. And this thing is a thousand lines of code. And it only shows it 21 lines at a time. So you have to hit yes and enter a bunch of times in order to get through everything. And there's probably an easier way to do this, but the only thing I could figure out was just hitting yes and enter a bunch. Okay, so once that's done, it's going to say, do you accept the license? You hit yes. And then it's going to ask, where do you want to install everything? What's the installed destination? Don't even worry about this. Just hit one and enter and just accept the default one. Here it's going to ask you if you want to make a desktop shortcut or if you want to create a menu item. Just hit one and enter and two and enter to unselect these. Then just hit enter to install. Now here it gave me an error because I've already installed it. You're not going to see this error, but I typed in always and then enter, which overrode everything. So there we go. We actually have the Linux version of this app installed on our Windows computer. And it's not going to run or anything else like that, but I'm going to show you where to find it in your computer because that's where we're going to pull those assets. So from the very top, go into this PC, then your C drive or your local drive, go into users, then your username, and the next folder you're going to go into is called app data. Now this is a hidden folder. If you don't see this when you go in there, go over to the view section in Windows Explorer and make sure you have selected hidden files. You can see when it's unselected, you can't see it. So go into app data, then local, then down to packages, and then scroll all the way down till you find the one that says the Debian project. Then open that up. Okay, we're gonna get deeper into it. You're gonna go into local state, then root FS, then home, then user, then GOG games, then Undertale, we're still going, then game. And there you go. So you have the assets folder and the runner file. These are the two things that are required in order to run Undertale. And that's it. You just have to drag these over into your SD card. And man, that was a lot of work. So pat yourself on the back because whew, we made it. So go into ports and you're going to see there's an Undertale folder that Amber Ports made for us. And then you're just going to drag these two files over. And at this point, congratulations, you've installed Undertale on your device. Go ahead and eject your SD card, and let's put it back into your device. Okay, so here we are booting up ArcOS. I'm going to go back into the Ports folder. Then I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and find Undertale. And there it is. And you can actually scrape this folder and get the box art if you'd like as well. So you just hit A to launch, give it a minute, and there you go. There's Undertale. And I wish I could say that when I showed this to my son, he was super excited. But, you know, he's a preteen, so he was just kind of like, Ah, cool, Dad. I can play that on my Switch. But anyway, I hope this was at least helpful for you if you want to try out this game. It's a very unique 2D role-playing game. It reminds me a lot of Earthbound, a game on the Super Nintendo. It's just a really funny game to me. You know, it does a lot of clever things when you least expect it to happen. Anyway, that's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming!